So for this video, we're gone from solving equations to now we're going to write linear equations and graph them. So one of several forms we're going to look at is slope-intercept form. But before we can look at that specific way of writing equations, we got to talk about linear equations. So what do they look like? Well, inside the word linear, we've got the word line. So our graph is going to be a straight line. All right, so you have the option of having a line go uphill. You could have one go downhill. You could have one go left to right, but be like on a flat surface. Or you can have one, oops, go up and down. All right, so this one you're walking uphill, this one you're walking downhill, this one you're walking flat, it's a horizontal line. And this one it's up and down, it's called a vertical line. All right, or you'll see it written as an equation. Okay, so a linear equation is going to have both x and y in it, and there's only going to be, um, the variables are only going to go to the first power. Okay, you won't have anything bigger than x to the first and y to the first. So, for example, you might have y equals 15 minus 3x. Only x and y, and both of them are just to the first power. You might have uh, 7x minus 8y plus 11 equals 19. All right. Again, linear because I only have x to the first, y to the first, and no other variables. If you had something like x squared plus y equals 7, all right, because of this x squared, not linear. All right. Or if you had something like that, x plus y equals z, not linear. It's got too many variables. You're only going to have an x to the y and only to the first power. So before we can talk about slope-intercept form, we got to talk about slope. What is slope? It's talking about how steep a line is. Okay, it's the gradient of the line. You might also hear it called the rate of change. Right? It's represented by a variable m. In all of our equations that we use, m is our slope. Okay, if you're looking at a graph to find the slope, all you have to do is count. All right, just remember it's rise over run. Okay, rise is talking about the y values and run is talking about the x. So rise is going up and down, right? The sun rises and run is left and right. You run horizontally, right? So if I were looking at this graph, okay, pick points that are nice pretty points, right? That they are at the intersection of your integers. You don't want any halves or thirds or estimating. So these two red dots are already picked out for us. So I've got one at 0, 1, and 2, 4. So to find the slope, I'm just going to pick one, and I'm going to go rise, then run. So if I go up, I go up 1, 2, 3, and then I go over 2. Okay, so I go up 3, up is positive, and I go over to the right, 2, to the right is positive. So my slope is 3 over 2. You could also do it from the other point. If I did it from the other point, first I would go down 3. Okay, going down is a negative. And then I would go left 2. Going left is a negative. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So either way, you're going to get a slope of 3 over 2. Right? If you don't have a graph, you're going to use a formula. Okay, a formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And this x2 and y1 and all these little subscripts, that's talking about the points you have. So in order to find slope, you've got to have two points, whether it's on a graph or out in writing. And your first point will just be x1, y1, and then your second point, x2, y2. So whatever your points are, you plug in here. All right, keep in mind, x2, y2 are a point, x1, y1 are a point. So they line up on our formula. All right, so I want to find the slope of these two pairs of points. So the first one, I've got 3, 4, and 9, 7. So 3, 4 is my x1, y1, and then I have x2, y2. And remember the slope formula is y2 minus y1, that's my rise, over x2 minus x1, there's my run. All right, so I'm just going to plug it in. So m equals y27 minus y14 over x29 minus x13. 7 minus 4 is 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. 
I can simplify 3 over 6 to get 1 half. So the slope between these two points is 1 half. Do it again over here. Right, I've got x1, y1, x2, y2. So y2 minus y1, negative 4 minus negative 1 over x2 minus x1, 2 minus 3. Negative 4 minus a negative becomes plus. So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And then 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Well, I can simplify negative 3 over negative 1. I can divide to get a positive 3. So the slope between those is positive 3. All right, we've made a slope-intercept form. Okay, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. We call it slope-intercept form because it gives me the slope and the intercept. So this m right here is my slope. So whatever is in front of the x is going to be the slope. And whatever constant you have, the one that's not with a variable, is going to be your y-intercept. And we call that b. So for this example, y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. My slope is 2 thirds, and then my y-intercept is at 0, 1. Now remember, your y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis. All right, so writing equations in slope-intercept form. Okay, you got three options. The first, you might, you might be given the slope and the intercept. That's the easiest one to do. So for this one, I want to write the equation in slope-intercept form that has a slope of negative 3 and a y-intercept of 8. So remember, my uh, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, and this one just gives me everything to plug in. Negative 3 is my m, 8 is my b, so I get y equals negative 3x plus 8. Easiest one to do. Then we get a little harder. All right, now we're writing the equation given the slope and a point that it passes through. So for this one, I want to write the equation that has a slope of 5 and passes through the point 2, 3. All right, a little trickier, but let me fill in what I know. So I've got y equals mx plus b. I can fill in my m, so y equals 5x plus b. All right, now I've got to figure out what b is. All right, well, I'm only given this point 2, 3. Well, in this point, I have an x and a y. So I can take my x and y and plug it in temporarily to find b. And then once I find b, I can rewrite my equation. So all I'm going to do is take my 3 and plug it in for y. Take my 2, plug it in for x, and have my plus b. Now I have an equation that I can solve. So 5 times 2 is 10. To get b by itself, I subtract 10. So then b equals negative 7. So now I can rewrite it as y equals 5x minus 7. So a little trickier, but not too bad. The third option, the hardest. Now I'm given two points, and that's it. So I'm going to have to find the slope using that formula, and then like last time, plug in one of my points to find my y-intercept. All right, so um, I know that eventually I want to get to y equals mx plus b, so I need an m. All right, I don't have an m, but I have an x1, y1, and an x2, y2, and my handy-dandy slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm just going to plug in. So on top, I've got 2 minus 4. On the bottom, 6 minus 2. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. I can simplify that to negative 1 half. So now I'm going to take my m back over here, and I've got y equals negative 1 half x plus b. And just like before, i got to plug in something to be able to find b. So I'm just going to plug in one of my points. doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to plug in the first one. So I'm going to plug in 4 for y and 2 for x, and solve for b. So I get 4 equals negative 1 half times 2 is just negative 1 plus b. To get b by itself, i got to get rid of that negative 1 by adding it. So then I get b equals 5. 
Now I can just plug my b into my equation, so I get negative 1 half x plus 5. So you might be given the slope and intercept, the slope and a point, or two points. But you've got enough formulas and stuff to use that you can figure out how to write a linear equation from that information. Graphing the line, right? Really not that hard. Slope intercept form makes it very easy for us. Okay, so for this first one, we've got y equals 2x plus 4, right? My slope is 2, my y intercept is at 0, 4. Every single time you graph in slope intercept form, you start with your y intercept. So my y intercept for this one, I'm going to go to 0, 4 and put a point. Right? I know my slope is 2. Okay, now remember all the slopes that we talk about rise over run has to be as a fraction. I can rewrite 2 as a fraction by making it 2 over 1. So my rise is 2, my run is 1. So from my point, I'm going to go positive 2 for my rise, which is up 2, positive 1 for my run, which is what? Right 1, and I'm going to put a point. I'm going to try to put a point. There we go. And I'm going to keep doing that. So from this point, I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1, right? And you really only need a couple points to be able to draw a line. Technically, you only need two points to be able to draw a line. Okay, for the second one, let me change colors. Now I've got y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 3. So my slope, negative 1 fourth x. And my, oops, not x, sorry, just negative 1 fourth. Um, and my y-intercept is at 0, negative 3. So I'm going to go down to negative 3. Put my y-intercept. Now my slope is negative 1 fourth. So remember, negative 1 fourth is the same if I put the negative on top or if I put it on the bottom. Okay, so it's just going to give you two different ways of uh, graphing your line. So if I went with the negative on top, that means my rise is negative, so I'm going down. So from my point, I'm going to go down 1 and then positive 4 is to the right 4. I can put a point there, try to, down 1, right 4, put another point. Or if I did 1 over negative 4, that makes my run negative, which means I'm going to the left. So from my y-intercept, I would go up 1 and then left 4. Up 1, left 4. Regardless of which one you choose, you're still, ooh, that was terrible, still going to get the same slope as long as you do it correctly. All right, so if you're graphing in slope-intercept form, you start at your intercept, and then you use your slope to just count some more points so that you can connect and make your line.